I'm George Aiken. Welcome back to the Governor HR YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about succession planning, the process of succession planning, the importance of succession planning, and the importance of governance across your succession planning process within your organization. Now, succession planning really is the developing of key individuals to take on future senior roles in your organizations. Now that may be future roles that you're working to build or future roles who currently have an incumbent in there and you're mitigating against the risk of the individual leaving eventually or moving on to another role. So it's very important. Often you find organizations in the rush to fill critical roles uh, will fill the role with uh, whoever's available rather than uh, the most capable. And that's important to note. There is a significant contrast between the two. Now, whoever's available may be available and may fill the spot here and now uh, and get a, a bottom on a seat and, and that's about it. But it destroys the value within the role itself. Uh, it could take away from your, uh, your status within the organization as a function within the organization. And it also sends the wrong message to people within the organization. Uh, because in, on one hand you're talking about leadership development, management development, performance management, all those uh, wonderful uh, statements that you make uh, as a value proposition. And then when the rubber hits the road, you're not delivering on that because you're just putting whoever's available rather than the most capable. Now, the other side to that, of course, is the person who is capable, uh, well, they'll have to wait for another opportunity. And that opportunity may not come within the organization. You may lose that, lose that individual externally. And then you've got the people next in line for that role. So it has a domino effect across your organization, it sends the wrong message across. Now, a succession planning process should, should go hand in glove with your uh, development, leadership development, uh, leadership management, performance management process across your organization. So you identify individuals who are extremely talented, who have a high potential, who show some uh, key attributes that you're, you're looking for in, in future leaders of your organization and you invest time, you invest money and you invest uh, uh, a lot of social capital in those individuals to build them up, to develop them into the leaders of, of the future for your organization. So you're saying that you need to deliver on that and it's very very important. Now some people will look at succession planning and I've, I've seen this before where Succession planning is nothing more than uh, a meeting where everyone gets around and the manager says, I want everybody to write down two or three people who can take their job in the future. Now that's not succession planning, that's, that's whistling in the wind, right? There is no value there. Unless you then put a plan in to develop, to identify who are these key people, are any of them really capable of taking on that role? Are any of them really interested in taking on that role? And then how you're going to achieve that. How are you going to get them to that next level, to be ready for that next role? Now, that next role may not come up straight away. It may come up a lot sooner than expected. And you need to manage expectations. The individual may not be developed sufficiently to fill that role. So you need to keep them you know, cool and calm and uh, guide them through the process. So it's an iterative process, it's an ongoing process, you need to constantly communicate. It's within, like any development, any performance management, uh, you need to give constant feedback and get constant feedback back from the individual. So, so it's an ongoing basis. Now, sometimes you'll see organizations who have a senior role uh, that comes up and they hire the first available person and everybody around the table knows this is the wrong person, it's the wrong decision made for the wrong reasons and it's, it's absolutely abhorrent. Um, the other one is where you hire someone externally. Now, if you're hiring someone externally because there's no one's 
develop, but you've earmarked somebody and you're, you're moving them up the chain. That, that's understandable. But other times, it's a sign by management of a lack of confidence in the people in the roles there. Or um, it's a fact that no one has the capability, not now, not ever, to take that role. Or there's been a very poor succession planning process in place. That is, it's all happened, you've come to a situation, Joe Blow's leaving, and we've not thought about that before, we don't have anyone to cover. Now, these are bad for your reputation as an HR function, because clearly someone's not doing their job. Right? It's bad for the organisation because it leaves the organisation in a precarious position because it's a senior leadership role, making key decisions for the organisation. And it's also bad for those sitting around the table, the junior people, the next level of management, etc. Because you may not think this is visible to them, but it is. And people talk and it sends the wrong message. It just doesn't resonate with, the, with them because they, they hear you talking about this leadership and development and opportunities, etc., and they see you do this. A significant disconnect. Now, at Government HR, we've had extensive experience at succession planning, uh, both from a regulatory perspective for, for significantly key high-risk roles, and also internally within the HR function. So, if you need any help with that or anything else from an HR perspective, please uh, go to our website and schedule your free HR walkthrough. Uh, if you like this video, please click like below, subscribe so you get the, the videos as soon as they come through, and leave us a comment. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great week ahead. Thank you.